everyone, welcome, this is Influence Colorist, and today I'm going to be talking about different styles and different mediums that can be used in your coloring books. I'm going to be referencing three of my favorite colorists um, on YouTube, ones that have inspired or influenced me, and I'm just going to highlight what their different styles are, and, and then I want to challenge myself to use those three different styles in one page. So I love working with mixed media. Most of my pages are different um, products, um, but I'm more interested on how all those different styles will look on one page. So I'll be working with uh, mythographic animals. So let's get started. These colorists that I'll be highlighting do so much more than what I'm showing you. I'm sure if you're watching my channel, you already are familiar with these colorists. But if for that slight chance you're not, please go check out their videos. Dee Dee Willingham is the first colorist that I followed and was in awe of her work in the Kirby Rosans books. And then the last few years, I love watching and seeing what she's doing in the Cute and Creepy book by Camilla D'Erico. The medium she uses in these books are acrylic paint and just the craft kind. I like how she uses a very minimal color palette, three main colors and usually contrasting colors. Background is usually um, a solid color and colors are usually very bright and bold. And then for the main coloring parts, she does an acrylic wash and then pencil work on top, finishing some details with a Posca pen. Images are shaded in a very high contrast way. In fact, I recently heard her say, it's all about the contrast. I love that she is so freeing, have fun and let loose, just go for it, is something I try to do when working in her style. The next colorist is Karen from the channel Zucchini Kitty. And I first followed her videos when I saw her work in the book, The Ink House and using Distress Ink. Coming from the scrapbooking and stamping world, I was so excited to be able to use all those ink pads for something other than stamps. Using different sponge and brush applicators, she applies the ink to the images and then uses pencil work to create the shading. And I would say the shading is on a medium to high level. She uses more realistic colors and earthy tones for that very natural soft look. Distress ink is also used in the background for kind of that muted, blotchy, blurry look, I guess how you would describe it. And this is another one of her pages. Not sure what book this is from, but I think it really shows how the distress ink can provide that first layer of soft color for the images and for the background. Last colorist to highlight is Emily Illustrator. She has done a lot of beautiful coloring in the Johanna Bassford's books. Uh, I would say more traditional in the sense of coloring with colored pencils, although she does add pastel backgrounds or watercolors for the backgrounds. Her color palette tends to be on the more like pastel range and shading tones tend to be within the color palette. And I love how she uses like a lavender shade for uh, a shadow. Uh, and I also love her color combinations of pinks and peaches or greens and teals. Very bright and very pretty are the first thoughts when I see her page. This is one that I did in her style. And these are some pictures of her work. So as you can see, these three styles are very different. So it will be interesting to see how um, I can incorporate those three styles in one page. The mythographic books can be quite intimidating, but I'm thinking it will be a good choice for this project to have a variety of some plants and flowers, um, and then one main animal and some solid background. This will not be a real-time tutorial. I do show parts in real time and speed coloring, and when things really get too long, I just finish off camera. First things first, I put cardstock behind the page I'm working on. I then used some washi tape around the border frame, and then I'll be using this black forest green craft paint for um, a nice, solid, bold background. 
I'll be using two brushes, a medium flat brush for the bigger areas, and then a smaller round brush to get around all those little tighter areas. I'll be using it straight out of the bottle for the background. And just loading up my brush and painting it on. All right, here is the, all the background painted. I would say it took about 20 minutes and I went back and added a little bit more paint in some of the other areas. And I'm gonna peel away the moment of truth, peel away the washi tape. And I try not to leave it on too long because it has stuck on the paper before. Um, but yeah, looks pretty good. And then I realized I needed to put some back because I'm going to be painting some of the flowers that also are right next to the edge. So back the tape goes. And this paint is called Celery Shoot. Nice bright kind of light green. Give it a good shake and this time I'm going to be watering it down. So I'm going to um, just squeeze a little bit on here. and squirt a little water and take my brush and I just mix a little bit in with the water first and I'm gonna test it on one of these um, bottom flowers first and just to see I don't want it to completely cover up the lines it should be transparent where you can still see through the lines so I'll add a little bit more water and test it out again and that looks about right All right, and this is where I'm gonna channel my inner Dee Dee here and be a little bit more painterly, freeing, work at a faster pace. This color doesn't show the variations of color that you get when you water it down, but there is a little bit. So I'm gonna paint all these larger leaves um, some other leaves and all the hidden objects with this color. Uh, I don't want the hidden objects to stand out in any way, so I'm going to treat them just as if they were some of the background leaves. And I may do something with that little gnome, uh, make them stand out a little bit more later, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and paint them. I'm going to leave some of the flowers, some other little leaves, and the frog all for other techniques. All right, for my next plants, I'm gonna be using this ink pad. This is a close to my heart ink pad in Sunflower. And then I'll also be using this makeup brush to apply it. So this will help give kind of a soft, more subtle color application. 
So the first thing I'm going to press it right here in the center because it's going to be a higher concentration of color first and then I'm going to move in a circular motion and I'm going to lighten the pressure and um, and then it kind of lightens the color on the page too. So it's like instant shading. Perfect. So in the center, rolling it out, center, roll out. Now some of them you don't see the center so I make sure I don't have a lot of ink on the brush and that way I can just get some of those edges. All right, and to clean these brushes or even sponges, you can take a baby wipe and just rub off the color. All right, and sticking with my ink pads, this color is olive. And I have a couple different brushes here. I have this, um, smaller round one. I'll see how that works first. So I'm just going to apply to these. There's like these little tiny leaves in a couple different areas. And you can always reapply more to make some areas a little bit darker to give that um, shading effect. And here this one is more of a skinny brush. Um, some of the leaves kind of branch out away from the little cluster, so I'm hoping this little brush will get to those individual leaves. And I'm also going to use this color for inside these bigger leaves. I think it's a nice complementary color um, for the, the shadow. All right, on to this little frog here. I'm going to use the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is Spiced Marmalade. I have a couple different applicators, the little sponge dauber, this little stick applicator with a little sponge on top. And, um, and then I also have the, the brush, brush applicators too. So we'll see which one is going to work best, or I might have to use all of them for just different areas. All right, so I'm going to use this little dauber here. So just put my finger in it, roll the sponge around on the ink pad, and I'm also gonna wipe a good access off of it um, onto a scrap piece of paper. That way, when I first put down my color, it is not super strong. Uh, I'm gonna kind of start in the head first, so I don't want it to have like this big circle um, spot. And I'm just going to very lightly rub it around to see how much I can get away with my pressure. But definitely start with light pressure first. And if you can start around an edge where there might be some shading, then you don't have to worry so much about the pressure. Um, then you just work, you know, lightening the pressure as you move towards the center or non shaded areas. All right, so it's getting a little bit harder with this sponge dauber. I want the belly to kind of be more white, so I'm just barely pushing it on there. 
and we'll try we'll try this little brush next it's kind of getting in those tight spaces but I think I'm gonna go with this little stick applicator That way when I tilt it on the edge, I'm kind of getting the very edge of the sponge and I can control where the color is put down a little bit better. All right, now I can finally remove the tape. Ah, look at that, nice clean edges. All right, and now starts the pencil work. So I'll be using the Prisma color pencils. All right, and here are the colors, 937. All right, so I'm going to start with not the very darkest color. I'm using the 122, so it's the darkest of the oranges that I'm using. And I'm just going to start to lay out where the darkest parts will be. And then I'm just going to lighten the pressure and kind of do an all over base coat. And really light where I don't want very much color, like on the under part of his mouth and on the belly. But adding a heavier pressure in the areas that I do want more intense color. All right, now taking my medium orange, now I'm just kind of applying an all over base coat of that. Still light pressure, although in those darker areas, I do go over and kind of burnish uh, that darker shade that I used. All right, now taking some of the lightest orange and just applying it to those highlight areas. Then I'm gonna use the darkest color, that is 937, and I'm just gonna add it in the very darkest parts of the shadow. And then I just go back and forth between those three oranges until I get the coloring just right. All right, so here it is almost finished. I'm actually gonna take a pink. This is from a Faber-Castell uh, pencil in number one, two, three. Just a nice kind of basic pink. And I'm just gonna hit around the very edges of where the orange and the yellow meet. So I'm kinda pressing a little bit harder where the orange is so you can see the pink and then kind of dragging just a light pressure of pink into that yellow.
All right, now I'm taking a blender pencil. I have a couple of different blender ones. This one is almost out, um, that's okay. Let me give it a quick sharpen. And then I'm just going to smooth out some of those um, pencil lines. Smooth and blend. I know you can't see it on film here, but up close I'm seeing a lot of, um, well, I was gonna say the canvas, but the, the paper kind of coming through. So just taking that kind of softens everything up. All right, so next I'm gonna be starting with more of the fantasy pastel range of colors. And this I am using um, 1013, 1009, and 132. And I'm also using a, a fine liner. I'm just going to hit some of these little um, inside of the flowers. This yellow will be nice and bright. Hopefully it won't get covered up too bad from the pencil. Okay, I'm going to start with the darkest purple first, and I'm just going to um, touch a little bit on the inside edge of the petal. It's going to be dark in the center and then get lighter as it goes up to the top of the petal. Uh, but I don't want to carry too much of this darker color because I'm wanting it to be a little bit more pastel. And then I'm taking more of this fuchsia color and just kind of running it over the darker purple and more towards the center of the petal. All right, and then taking that peach color, running it all over the purples and almost dragging some of that pigment, that purple pigment up into the peach. So it gives it a nice blend and a nice peach highlight up at the top of the petal. And if you want to make a color more intense, you can always go back over with that other color and then again, just blend that in. All right, and these last little leaves are going to be uh, 1089 and 992. And first, I think I'm going to take this dark kind of hunter green fine liner and just um, get into these little small stem areas. All right, I'll take this 992 color and just going at the very bottom, kind of dark, heavier pressure. Okay, 
Okay, and then taking that lighter 1089 shade and rubbing it over the top of that darker color, pulling it up and making it lighter at the top. And then I'm gonna um, I'll go over again with that um, kind of medium shade. just to intensify the color a little bit and i might need to make a little bit more intense so i'm going to take an even darker teal this is 105 and just go on the very um, bottom part of that leaf All right, next for the hat, I'm gonna be using black 935 and this lavender 956 for the highlight. So when I went over the Emily Illustrator pages, um, I loved this combination of kind of this peach um, and tan for like wood, and then you use lavender for like the shadow or shading. So this color is 927. And then I'll use 943 around the edges and around the grain lines for the wood. And kind of burnish that with the peach tone. And then I'll take my lavender and do that shadow on this right side and under the leaf. I don't know why, I just really love that combination. All right, now taking a darker, more hunter green color. This is 1090, and I just wanna create more contrast in these flowers. So that ink kind of provided that softer layer, and now I'm just gonna go through and add a little bit more higher concentration or higher contrast. All right, some of my last final touches, I'm going to be using this lighter green. This is 1089, and I'm just going to hit around the edge of the image, uh, you know, right where the background and the main images meet. And this will just give it a little glow around the frog and some of the plants. It's very subtle. Not sure if you'll be able to see it on video. I guess you can see it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna kind of blend it into the background. I don't want it intense, but just a light glow. All right, and then saving the Posca for last, I'm just adding some higher intensity highlights with the white Posca pen. Maybe give him some little spots around his belly. And then definitely highlight some of these little areas on his toes.
and I ended up adding a light layer of orange to the troll's hat and a little bit of blue to his pants. Um, and then I'm going to add some of this white Posca in his beard. So I thought he was kind of the only one that really fit with the, the rest of the page. And he was kind of cute sitting there. So I thought it would be all right to highlight him. But all the other hidden objects I didn't want to bring too much attention to. So this ended up being a really fun personal challenge project. I feel I represented the three styles in some way. I have a three main color palette with green, orange, and purple. I have a bold, solid background. I used bright colors. I used earthy, realistic colors and pastel shades. I used acrylic paint wash, ink pads, and color pencils. It did take some planning ahead to figure out what I was going to use on what, but nothing seems too out of place. All in all, I think it looks pretty good. I hope this has inspired you to play around with not only mixed media, but also mixed styles. Thanks for watching.